First, we'll see the cholinergic agonists. These will be the drugs that will either mimic acetylcholine at the synaptic cleft or act indirectly via inhibiting acetylcholinesterase enzyme and increasing acetylcholine at the synaptic cleft. We'll discuss both the muscarinic and nicotinic agonists at the same place. The directly acting cholinergic agonists can be divided into the choline esters and the alkaloids. They will act directly by mimicking acetylcholine. The choline esters include acetylcholine, of course, but acetylcholine itself has no therapeutic value, the reason being that it is both degraded by the synaptic anticholinesterases and the pseudocholinesterases present in the plasma. That's why we cannot use acetylcholine as a drug. Although, if given systemically, it will cause hypotension due to its action on the M3 receptors of the endothelium of the blood vessels, as described previously. The next choline ester is methacholine and its muscarinic actions predominate its nicotinic actions. The hydrolysis of methacholine by acetylcholinesterase enzymes is less than that of acetylcholine. Now, methacholine, as we know, is a muscarinic uh, agonist. That's why it will increase uh, bronchial smooth muscle contraction and all also bronchial uh, gland secretion. That's why its use is diagnostic in testing bronchial hyperreactivity in asthmatic patients. So its main use is diagnostic. The next choline ester is carbacol. Now carbacol is resistant to both the enzymes, the anticholinesterases, and it has both muscarinic and nicotinic actions. And in case of poisoning or overdose by carbacol, its actions cannot be completely antagonized by the anti-muscarinic agent, that is atropine, we'll discuss it. Carbacol is used in the treatment of glaucoma. The next choline ester is bethnicol. Now, bethnicol has major selective muscarinic actions on the bladder and the GIT. It, it does not act on nicotinic receptors and it can be remembered by the fact that beth doesn't like nicotine. It is resistant to both the enzymes, both the anticholinesterases, just like carbacol, and it is mainly used in post-operative paralytic ileus and urinary retention by making use of its muscarinic actions on the GIT and bladder. And in case of toxicity, its muscarinic actions can be completely antagonized by atropine. The alkaloids are tertiary amines. That means that the nitrogen is uh, completely bound by three functional groups and thus it is unionized. That's why it can cross the blood-brain barrier. The first alkaloid is pilocarpine. It has predominant secretory activity and mainly it is used as a sialogogue in xerostomia and also in glaucoma. Its use in glaucoma is due to its action on the M1 receptors both in the sphincter uh, pupillae and in the ciliary muscles. By contracting both these muscles it will cause drainage of aqueous humor and leading to a decreased intraocular pressure. Pilocarpine can also be used in the screening test of uh, cystic fibrosis because in that we need to check the chloride concentration in the sweat and pilocarpine because it has increased secretory activity can be used for that purpose. The side effects will of course be due to the muscarinic agonist activity and main side effect is pulmonary edema on systemic therapy. The next alkaloid muscarine is mainly important for its role in mushroom poisoning by the inocybe species. The Amanita muscaria, causing the hallucinogen type, only contains traces of muscarine. Now there are three types of mushroom poisoning. One is rapid onset, second is hallucinogen type, and third is the delayed onset type. The rapid onset type is caused by inocybe species and mainly is caused by muscarine. And that's why it can be completely antagonized by atropine and thus atropine is the uh, antidote for this. While the second hallucinogen type, which has mainly central effects, is caused by Amanita muscaria, which has muscarine as trace element, but also has other toxins such as muscimol, and that's why it has the central effects. 
So in this case, atropine is contraindicated because th that is not the main toxin in this case. And mainly the therapy is supportive. Lastly, the delayed onset type is caused by Amanita phylloides and it does not have muscarine as the toxin. It has amatoxin and other toxins. That's why it causes gastroenteritis, hepatic and renal damage. In this case, atropine is also contraindicated because it will not solve the problem because muscarine is not the major toxin. The main therapy in this case is thioptic acid, which is an antioxidant which will prevent damage to these organs. The next alkaloid is ericoline and has both muscarinic and nicotinic actions. Now all these three that we discussed, pilocarpine, muscarin and uh, ericoline had predominant muscarinic properties, but now we'll discuss an alkaloid that will specially act at nicotine and that is nicotine of course. Nicotine has no uh, therapeutic value apart from its use as patches and small doses in bubble gums etc. used in smoking cessation. Now another drug Verenicline which is not a nicotine alkaloid it is actually a partial agonist at the nicotinic receptors and is used in smoking cessation. Now it, it is not an alkaloid and should not be mentioned here but I could not find any other place for this. Now we'll come to the indirectly acting cholinergic agonists. That means they are not directly acting on the receptors, but they act on the acetylcholinesterase enzyme and inhibit it. And that's why the synaptic acetylcholine levels increase because they're not degraded. These drugs can be divided into the drugs that reversibly inhibit the enzyme and those which irreversibly inhibit it. The, the reversible ones can be further divided into those which can enter the CNS and those which cannot. The reversible cholinergic agonists that can enter the CNS include physostigmine, donepezil, and tecrine. Physostigmine is rarely used in glaucoma due to its threat of causing cataracts it can be used topically though. Physostigmine is used to reverse the anti-mascarinic overdose by atropine and it is preferred because it can reverse both the central and peripheral effects because it enters the CNS. Donepezil and tecrine are used in Alzheimer's disease because uh, by increasing acetylcholine level, uh, patients have shown improvement. To remember these three drugs, we have the mnemonic Tecrine is so done with physiology that he decides to enter the CNS and get his brains back. Coming to the ones that cannot enter the CNS, the reason being their quaternary ammonium structure because the nitrogen atom is positively charged with four function groups and thus ionized so cannot enter the CNS. They include neostigmine, pyridostigmine and adrophonium. The neostigmine is mainly uh, Mainly actions are pronounced on NMJ, neuromuscular junction, GIT, and bladder. It acts both directly, that is, as it has a structure similar to acetylcholine, it is a quaternary amine. Acetylcholine is also a quaternary compound. It can act directly on the receptors, acetylcholine receptors, and also indirectly by inhibiting the acetylcholinesterase enzyme. Now, it has no central side effects, so it is mainly preferred over physostigmine in myasthenia gravis treatment and as it has major action on NMJ, it will uh, improve the patient's symptoms in myasthenia gravis. It is also used in curare poisoning that is skeletal muscle relaxation and also finds its use in post-operative urinary retention and paralytic ileus. Pyridostigmine is the same as neostigmine and is preferred over neostigmine because of its increased action and better tolerability. Adrophonium has a rapid onset of action and very short duration, about 8 to 10 minutes. Now it is used diagnostically in the Tensilon test or Adrophonium test to differentiate uh, between myasthenia crisis and cholinergic crisis. Myasthenic crisis will be the muscle weakness that is caused by the myasthenia gravis, that is it has diminished uh, acetylcholine at the receptors. but 
the other cholinergic crisis is due to increased levels of uh, acetylcholine at the synapses. Now to differentiate between these two um, crises, we administer adrophonium and if the situation gets better, that means it was myasthenic crisis because it did not have acetylcholine and when it was given, the mus muscle weakness um, was over. But in case of cholinergic crisis where there is increased acetylcholine, when you give adrophonium, it will increase the acetylcholine even more and make the patient a muscle weakness worse and there will be no improvement because that is due to the receptor's insensitivity that is due to the increased acetylcholine present at the synaptic left. That's one use of adrophonium and second it is used in uh, diagnosis of myasthenia gravis and also in curare poisoning because it has a rapid onset of action and is uh, and can be used in emergency cases. Lastly, the irreversibly acting uh, cholinergic agonists will irreversibly inhibit the enzyme acetylcholinesterase and they include mainly the organophosphorus insecticide compounds. They are parathion, malathion, nerve gases such as sarin, diflos and ecothiophate. They all of them have no therapeutic use except ecothiophate which can be used in resistant cases of glaucoma and all of them have poisoning uh, importance, toxicological importance. One is the acute poisoning which, uh, uh, which, is, which is due to the irreversible blockade of acetylcholinesterase leading to muscarinic effects, nicotinic effects and also central effects leading to convulsions, coma and death due to respiratory failure. For the treatment of acute poisoning by organophosphorus compounds, the muscarinic effects can be antagonized by atropine, the nicotinic effects can be antagonized by administering oxymes such as pralidoxime which will reverse the enzyme into its active form and thus the acetylcholinesterase will start working and getting rid of the excess acetylcholine at the uh, nerve terminals, the neuromuscular junctions. The important thing here is the early administration of uh, pralidoxime. Now once uh, the enzyme acetylcholinesterase undergoes aging then it cannot be reversed. So the key is to administer oxymes as early as possible. One point to remember is that the nerve gases cause aging in very short time that is about two to three minutes and that's why they are almost always deadly and fatal. The chronic poisoning by these insecticides is due to the lipid solubility of the organophosphorus compounds which go to the myelin sheet and act as heptins then uh, triggering an immune response and thus leading to destruction of the myelin sheath of the neurons thus leading to peripheral neuropathy. This chronic toxicity mimics multiple sclerosis and has no treatment and is manifested as wrist drop, foot drop, diplopia and scanning speech etc. Now I forgot to mention one thing, it's a mnemonic to remember the reversible indirectly acting cholinergic agonists that cannot enter the CNS. The mnemonic is that there is a new phone installed in the pyramid that can call anywhere but the CNS. I hope this lecture helped.